All right, hey everyone, Riley here from becomingandelectrician.com. In this video, I wanna quickly talk to you about electrical loads, okay? So when it comes to our circuit, we have electrical loads, which is like, you know, a resistor or an inductive load, and then we have like a power source, okay? And you're gonna see it as like AC, maybe 120 volts. And then uh, sometimes um, if, you know, in the basic circuits, when it comes to DC, uh, many times, you know, they'll do like a little battery and stuff for our power source. Um, maybe like 12 volts or something. But regardless of what our power source is, it is just what's providing the circuit power, okay? But we as electricians, when it comes to the power source, because we have to know the power source when it comes to our electrical load. An electrical load is what is consuming power. Uh, a power source is what is providing the circuit power. Again, this right here um, is given from the utility company. All right, so now when they provide us power from the transformer, right, it comes into the building, whether that whether you're in a home or if you are in a commercial setting, what happens is the utility company will send you power to like your main power, you know, like your main panel. And then from here, what's going to happen is you are going to go to different panels, OK, depending on what the equipment needs in that building. So, for example, this one here could be like 120 volts. This one here could be like 480 volts. And then this one here could be uh, 600 volts, okay? So this right here, this number can change, but this is called the power source. But when we're talking about an electrical load, there's a couple things that we have to know, okay? We have to know voltage. We have to know phases. So let's go voltage. We have to know phases, okay? So for example, uh, is it are we sending just 120 to it? Uh, if it's, for example, if it's like um, 600, right? So we have um, 600. 347, right? And then we have uh, 480 slash 277 volts. And then uh, instead of 120, it would be like either 208 volts slash 120, or it could be uh, 240 in our homes, okay? It just depends on how it is coming from the transformer. So it's very important to understand what this load, what this load's asking for in terms of voltage, okay? So let's talk a little bit about electrical loads. Now we can have purely resistive loads and we can have like inductive loads. So this would be like a motor. Okay. So I'll just do right here. I'll go. So we have like resistive loads. Now a resistive load without getting too intense into the math and stuff, a resistive load, we can apply Ohm's law right across the board. No problem. For example, if this was 10 ohms. Okay. So let's just uh, now go back. So if there's 10 ohms, we know that 10 ohms can go here. We have 100, 120 volts, let's say. So 120 volts. We know that this is 12 amps, okay? Because this is 100% purely resistive. That's really, really important to know. Um, and what that is saying is that our amperage and our voltage are in phase, okay? I'm not really going to be covering that in this video, but examples of resistive loads, because there's actually not many. A resistive load is something that it really is just heating up like an element, something like a baseboard heater. You're going to see it as a BBH. And so when it comes to a baseboard heater, again, you can be providing it. Let's just do this. You can be providing it with like two phases. Okay. And the benefit of providing a baseboard heater with two phases is you can have smaller wire size. So for example, if we have these different panels right up here. So let's just say we talk about this. Um, Let's go 208 to 120 because that's typically what you would see when it comes to like a baseboard heater. So many times baseboard heaters could be 208 volts, oops, uh, 208 volts. And if it's 208 volts, that means that this load right here is asking for two phases. Don't worry about the 120 over here. I'm just giving a hypothetic example. So if our baseboard heater is 208 volts, that means it needs to have two, um, an A and a B. So in other words, it isn't using a neutral, okay? If we have um, just one hot, right? So let's say it's asking for 120. So I'll go 120 volts and then neutral. So typically what's going to happen is the wire size is going to be bigger or the baseboard heater won't be able to put out an, uh, on the same amount of power than um, two phases. So when it comes to a resistive load, so, you know, a baseboard heater is a very, very good example. Uh, maybe like a toaster. Okay. So just a basic toaster, you know, in the morning, you push it down for some pieces of toast and it's just warming up a resistor and it's getting really, really hot. Okay. Another example is like, um, 
a stove coil, right? Like a stove top coil. And they just kind of like look, look like this, right? Um, also, another example of a resistive load is like old school incandescent light bulbs. So examples of um, inductive loads. So I'll just run into space here a little bit, but I'll go inductive loads. Now, an inductive load is something that requires motion, essentially. So if we're talking about a fan or, uh, you know, motors, air conditioners, um, you know, anything that kind of has moving parts is like an inductive load. And they are unique in a sense that we just can't really apply this Ohm's law just right off the board. We actually have to start applying triangles for our loads, okay? But this video is just kind of breaking down an electrical load. So when we have a power source is providing the circuit power, it's very important to know voltage, phase, which is going to tell us essentially how many wires it needs. Uh, we also need to know like wire size and all that stuff, but that's why we're looking at our prints to figure that stuff out. Okay. Um, and then if you don't know what you want to look at is the nameplate. Okay. The nameplate is going to tell you all of this information and you'll never screw up as an electrician. Okay. Now, when we talk about a purely resistive load, again, there's actually not that many loads out there. And another thing to remember when it comes to our prints is that the engineers figure out all this stuff for us. We just look at the wire size and voltage and phases. And, you know, when we when we are pulling our wires, we are just kind of connecting the dots. The engineers figure all this stuff out for us, um, you know, in terms of power factor and leading and lagging and all that kind of stuff. But a purely resistive load um, it doesn't have a leading or lagging, okay? Because it doesn't have moving parts. Um, as soon as you have to get into like coils and, you know, like um, transformers and motors and stuff like that, um, you're now getting into, um, so current lags voltage. And I'm not covering that in this video, but that is just to do with uh, what's called the power factor. Um, and inductive loads, again, are things like fans and motors. And essentially, a load is something that is consuming power. So all of these are type, different types of loads, all right? And they're using power. And that's an electrical load. It, it, you know, and, it, and it's kind of like most basic form. And what you really need to know as an electrician out there. Yes, when it comes to the schooling, yeah, it's good to know all this kind of stuff. But honestly, when you're really, really out there as an electrician, you're mainly focused on what that nameplate is saying. And then you want to satisfy that nameplate so that your wire size is proper, that you're giving it the proper voltage so that everything's working normally, okay? So if you guys want to stay updated with my website called becominganelectrician.com, you can download my free book. Just go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe and you can download it absolutely free. It is for apprentice electricians. If you guys have any questions or would like to see uh, different videos in this kind of format, just leave a comment below and I will get back to you. So thanks for checking out the video and I'll talk to you in the next one.